Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Intermediate Accounting Wiley 18th edition. Wow, it's exciting. Exercise 4-5. This textbook, the authors are Don Kiso, Jerry Weingen, and Terry Warfield. The question used in the presentation is copyright 2022 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. Um, my solution presentation is copyright 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are mine and not the authors of the textbook or of Wiley. And again, I really want to thank Wiley for allowing me to do this. You don't know how big of a deal it is. Um, McGraw-Hill has continued to tell me that I'm number one. Uh, by holding up their middle finger uh, when I've asked them to make them public. I get it where they're coming from, but I really think that this is much better than check. Okay, because at least you're learning how to do it. Okay, so let's go over here before we think the bus driver. Let's go right over here. Okay, so we've got a Hura company. Sorry about the printing on this. Uh, so right over here, we've got um, cash, receivables, inventory, equity investments, and then we're asked to prepare a revised balance sheet given the available information. Assuming that the accumulated depreciation balance for the buildings is 160 and for the equipment is 105. Okay, so when we're going through and preparing a balance sheet, we're generally going to do it in order of liquidity, right? So, but with when we're going up here and when we're going through and starting, we're going to have or her a company. Um, balance sheet as of 12-31-25. Now, here's also an error. You do not say for the year ended 2025. A balance sheet is a snapshot in time, basically saying it is as of a particular date. So that's a huge error. Okay, so right over here, we've got assets. And we're going to start with our current assets. So we'll go ahead and start with cash. Our cash balance right over here is going to be at 230000 Now, with accounts receivable, it's saying accounts receivable net. But what I want to do is I, where, how do we get to accounts receivable net? Well, it's going to be accounts receivable less my allowance for doubtful accounts is going to give us accounts receivable net. So over here, um, assume that the allowance for doubtful accounts has a balance of 17000 well, if the net amount of accounts receivable is 340000 the allowance for doubtful accounts is, well, it's not 24, it's 17000 That must mean that the accounts receivable had a $357,000 balance. So that's how I want to go through and show that here. Okay, so I've got accounts receivable. Still going to be at 340, but I want to show this breakout. Now, most companies I'll show the net. Sometimes, if you take a look over here at Meta Platforms, the former, the company formerly known as Facebook, the artist formerly known as Prince. Let's go ahead and take a look at this right over here. So they'll show accounts receivable net. Now, in some of their older financial statements, they would say net of allowances of blank and blank. So clearly, like that amount is going through and dropping a little bit, but you know, they don't have, they're not showing what their allowance for doubtful accounts is. They don't necessarily have to, but they would show it in a footnote. So over here, now we're getting over here to inventory, lower of cost or net realizable value. This is going to be at 401000 now we're going to have over here investments held for sale. My investments held for sale. Now, because we're going to be selling this in the next year, um, this is going to be at um, this is going to be a current asset because we're going to be selling in the next year. Now, what's interesting about this, and this is also another tricky part of this, is that it's showing it at cost. When we have investments and when we get to chapter 17, we're going to learn that we have to show investments at the lower, actually you're gonna, sorry, just take that back. You're gonna be showing investments at market value, right? So we show investments at market. So if the fair value or the market value is 120,000, we do not show it at cost. We have to show it at market value, okay? The buildings and land held for future use, these are all non-current assets. Goodwill, non-current, 
held to maturity debt investment, non-current prepaid expenses. That's going to be a current asset. So we're going to go prepaid expenses. This is going to be 12,000. So our total current assets will be the 230 plus the 340 plus the 401 plus the um, equity investments, basically for assuming the, the equity investments at fair value plus our over here, plus our prepaid expenses. Okay, so that is our first part over here, which is gonna be our current assets. Now take a look at our non-current assets. Okay, so over here, we've got over here, we've got buildings. And again, when we're going through and, and like listing out these things, right? It really kind of says your solution manual kind of shows they're doing the land held for future use and held. I mean, so it, there's different ways you can do it. Let's just go ahead and we'll do it the way the book shows. We've got land held for future use. That's going to be 175,000. And the reality is like management would prepare these financial statements management prepares them and you then as the auditor would basically be going through and saying, okay, is this correct? So my land held for future use is 175. Um, beyond that, then I get down over here and I've got held to maturity, that investment, this is at 90,000. And then I'm gonna have building less accumulated depreciation is gonna give me my building net. Over here, I'm gonna have equipment, less accumulated depreciation. And this is gonna be my equipment net. So my equipment net is going to be 160,000. My building net is gonna be 100 and 570,000. So what I want to do over here, though, but as it tells me, is that assume that the accumulated depreciation balance on the building was 160. And then on the equipment, it is 105,000. So that must mean that the equipment pre-accumulated depreciation was at um, 265 and it was 730. Now, what you'll notice is on most corporate balance sheets, you'll go over here and it'll say property and equipment net. Then what they'll go through and do is that they'll basically have over here is that they will basically then show in the footnotes of the financial statements under equipment, they'll show you the accumulated depreciation. Let's go ahead and have some fun and look that up. So here in note seven to the financial statements for meta platforms, what you'll see over here is that they'll show a further breakdown. So this is the property and equipment gross. This is pre any type of accumulated depreciation. And then you've got less accumulated depreciation. This is going to give you equipment net. So they've got about 21 million, 21 billion in construction and progress. I guess they're building a big city. So let's come over here. So we've got equipment net. And now let's go ahead and we'll, we'll finish this out in terms of the non-current assets. We always are going to want to list goodwill last. So our goodwill amount is going to be 80,000. And why do we list goodwill last? Because like goodwill is a result, it's an intangible, but it doesn't have, it's not the same thing as kind of like a patent. It has value, but generally it's always going to be listed last in terms of going through and noting this on the balance sheet, as you'll kind of see over here, you've got goodwill, they got other assets, but you're generally gonna list it towards the bottom just because it's not really liquid. Okay, it represents the excess of what I paid for something when I bought it when I bought a business. Okay, so my total non-current assets are going to be right over here, million seventy-five. And so then my total assets are going to be my current assets plus my non-current assets or 278. Once I've done with my assets, I'm now going to go to my liabilities. So my liabilities, let's start out with my current liabilities. 
Okay, so my current liabilities, I'm gonna have accounts payable. I'm gonna have notes payable. Why am I listing out notes payable? It says it's due next year. Remember for a current liability, it's gotta be due within the year. So this here is gonna be 135,000. This is gonna be 125,000. Now the pension obligation is considered to be a long-term liability. So we're not gonna put it here. Rent payable, that's generally gonna be current. And then the bond payable, that's gonna be non-current. So right now my total current liabilities are gonna be the sum of these three items over here. My non-current liabilities are going to be my pension obligation. My pension obligation is 82,000. Now for the bond payable, the way I'm going to show this is I'm going to basically show this as 500,000 plus my premium on my bond payable, which is going to be 53,000. So my bond payable carrying value is going to be the sum of these two right over here. Um, as far as any other type of non-current liabilities, I don't think that there are any. So my total non-current liabilities is going to be 82 plus the 553. So my total liabilities are going to be 635 plus a 309 for a total of 944. Okay. Now we get over here to owner's equity. For our owner's equity, we're going to have common stock at basically common stock par. Now, when you're going through and writing this out, I'm not going to do the whole thing. You need to go through and kind of like list out basically your par value, shares authorized, issued, and outstanding. But we're not going to go through and do that today. Um, let's go ahead and just go ahead and list this out. So we've got common stock at par. So this is going to be 290,000. We're going to have additional paid in capital common stock. This is going to be over here at 160,000. And now they're big giving us a big question mark for retained earnings. So we're going to have to figure out what that balance is. I would never do a question like this. I would probably give you something like, like net income and have you figure out what retained earnings is, but this is kind of a weird one. So, but so my total owner's equity, and then we're gonna have our total liabilities and owner's equity. Now at this point in time, we're kind of have like a math problem, right? We've got total assets of 2,178,000, right? And then this has to equal my total liabilities plus my owner's equity. So I know I've got liabilities in 944, and then I also know that over here, my common stock at par is 290. My additional paid in common, my additional paid in capital common stock And then this is over here, common stock par, additional paid in capital common stock. So my retained earnings by default needs to be 784,000. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we've got total owner's equity right over here of 1,234,000. My total liabilities and owner's equity is gonna be 2,178,000, which has to equal total assets. So again, I think this is a nice little exercise to kind of go through and do. Um, I like cash flows more than I like making balance sheets, but you know, it's a good practice. And remember when you're practicing in real life, you're going to be going through and looking at other people's battle, you know, like you're going to be figuring it out on your own, but generally order of liquidity and just making sure that your class of categorizing your assets and liabilities in a proper way. So I want to thank you to Wiley again for allowing me to go through and to use their material there. I'm extremely grateful for them. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you need any other solutions, please feel free to ask for them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day.